Welcome to the Crypto Brew Show, where we are drinking brews and talking about it. It is June 20th, 2018, and we are joined by that CBC Crypto Brew Crew. Oaks, how you doing out there, man? I am great, drinking on a good Shiner Strawberry Blonde. Ooh, fantastic, fantastic. Angela, uh, I don't see you on that love sack out there. How you doing? I'm good. Back to reality, right? Hey, there you go. I'm having I'm having a great time. It's pretty cool outside, actually. It's kind of bizarre, but um, a perfect day for no lie, amber ale. No lie, amber ale. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Right? Yeah. Um, straight out of Spokompton. Hello. That's what we call it. <laughs> Jojo, what's going on out there? Uh, not too much. What's going on, guys? Um, Oaks. Strawberry blonde, man. Weak. Come on, bro. Come on. It's delicious and it's summer. Don't judge me. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'll give it to you. Um, myself, I'm drinking on a Tristera Hops double IPA right out of uh, Eugene, Oregon at the Ninkasi Brewing Company. <laughs> Ronnie Sarah Hops, baby. There we go. There we go. Nothing better than dinosaurs and beer. Hey. Jurassic World comes out tomorrow, I think. Does it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. And, I've been uh, telling you off. Bro, how you doing out there? Doing good. You still in Utah? Freaking, uh, still, I'm in northeastern Utah now. Okay. So, right. this is, I don't even know how to say this, man. Um, Uinta? Uinta? Sure. We'll go with that. Yeah, it's out of Salt Lake City. Uh, it's their just their golden ale. Boom, tasty stuff. Nice. And of course, I am drinking the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Boop boop. Out of California. Let's go. Let's go. All right, guys. Let's get this show going. Let's get the. Hey, get out of here. I saw that. I saw that. Uh, first, uh, first things first. Disclaimer. The information provided on the show does not constitute investment advice, financial advice, trading advice, or any other sort of advice. Crypto Brew Show is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Conduct your own due diligence and consult your financial advisor before making any investment decisions. Fantastic. Hashtag Nafamu, not a financial advisor. My own opinions. You'll hear that a lot on the show, and that's what that means. And of course, hashtag BYOB, we did. Did you? Moving on. Stay of the market. State of the market. Hey, we are looking up from last week. At least, uh, Oaks. Uh, what we got on the other market, man? All right, so we're looking at a global market cap two hundred eighty nine point four two billion dollars. Uh, and sitting in our top five, we got number one is Bitcoin, sitting at six thousand seven hundred and seventy, up five point nine eight percent on the seven day. Looking at number two is Ethereum at five hundred and thirty six. It's also up on the seven day at twelve point eight percent up. And Ripple, look at that stupid new. Fucking logo. Sorry for the language. Anyways, that's uh, sitting at 53 cents. It is up 1%. Uh, and then for Bitcoin Cash, it is at $889, up 5.24%. And rounding off the top five is EOS, sitting at $10.43. And on the seven day, it is up 3.28%. Yeah, I hope they did not pay uh, big mu- big bucks for that logo because that X does not mark the spot. Uh, 20- I heard it was fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> uh, Twenty-four hour volume sitting at twelve point eight billion. BTC dominance back up above forty percent. Uh, alrighty, awesome, awesome. Thank you, Oaks. Moving on to our uh, gainers and losers, courtesy of Bitscreener Jojo. I know uh, you love these gainers and losers. Oh yeah, you know me so well, Charlie. Um, anyways, we've got Invion up at the top with 97.83% growth uh, year over year. And then following in right behind that, um, we've got a couple other names out there. Swarm mentioned that one on the last one. Um, and then, you know, we've got some stuff out there. I don't know if these growths are just a real enigma or if they're actually happening and they're yeah, true. So we got Enigma. Enigma on there at 13.46%. And uh, I think Oaks actually has something to tell us about the reason that. Note note on Enigma. Um, I mean, again, 
do your own research, Nafamu, but uh, Enigma, I think that growth is from the IBM partnership. Uh, it's pretty big news in my opinion, so I'm going to be looking out for some uh, Enigma. That's uh, that's good, man. And, um, you know, hopefully there's not just one root holding that up. Um, not to throw one root out there, but 23.97% growth. And then, you know, going to our losers here, we got Coindash. Man, it's up at the top again of the losers. Another 21.87% down in 24-hour volume. I don't know. Maybe this is going up on the weekends and then down during the weekdays for us, but straight five weeks in a row. <laughs> I don't know if I would buy this coin. Hashtag not for move. <laughs> um, but anyways, um, yeah. So that's that's pretty much it. Uh, sports, you know, still down, and then uh, other stuff rounding out the top there. But that's pretty much what we got going on here, Charlie. What what else we got going on today, man? Awesome, awesome. We're looking at our heat map. Uh, not great, but certainly not as bad as last week. Uh, just kind of. Holding steady, holding steady, the market is. Alrighty, heading over to market news, headliners. Our first headline of the day is from News BTC. They report Tether does have enough dollar reserves to back all USDT in circulation. Um, I know Tether has been a hot button topic in the crypto world, uh, whether it's legit or not. Um, pretty interesting article here coming out um from news btc uh oaks what you what you thinking about this article man okay so tether they say they have uh so what this was is it wasn't an audit it was a report not even from a um it is from a law firm not an accounting firm on uh, so and one of the firm's partners of the law firm is an advisor for two of the banks that tether goes through um and throughout the report that they sent out that the, they, they say that the FSS, which is the law firm procedures performed are not for purpose of providing assurance. And they said that they have in good confidence that they have enough dollars to coins backed and they can't, they, they don't have anything before the first and they don't have anything after the first. So they could have just accumulated the assets really quick, got that snapshot and then moved it all away. Uh, Nafamu, but I'm not going where going near Tether. <laughs> All right, fair enough, Joe. I see uh, you see your delicious beer there. What yeah, I mean, straight up biased BS. That's all I'm reading from this article. You know, we know Tether is not the most well known coin. Um, you know, ha hashtag Nafamu, obviously, you know, make your own decisions, do your own research, but. Tether has never been like a really great bet for things. And this is them just trying to manipulate their own market and try to make themselves better. And, uh, you know, you've got some other great things out there that are more viable, but for sure. And like Roan mentioned this last week, um, actually he's about to mention it uh, probably here in a second. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's having. So I'll let Roan take it away and explain that one a little more to us. Okay, so when I read this article, what I get is it's like a drunken night with your friends where you talk about doing something amazing, you know, and it's like, okay, yeah, rain check, we're going to do that, but it never becomes reality. It never becomes a fact, right? That's what this is. Like it's, it's wishful thinking. It's, it's a law. It's a, it's a lawyer saying, yeah, yeah, yeah it's good. I looked at it. It's good with with no factual evidence okay that being said there are other options out there for stable coins true usd i don't know that much about it but from what little i've read i would trust it more than tether and uh haven also has in usd which is backed by another coin which has a public smart contract so it doesn't need an audit it's there for anybody to look at anytime they want to Yep, that's There's better fair. options out there. I, I agree there. Angela, what you got? Um, I just love the fact that shout out to news was this news BTC. Uh drama alert. Okay, <laughs> that's the cool analogy to what used to be the gold standard and stuff, but scroll down a little bit and tell me more about the subpoena, right? Like you know who your audience is. You're clearly talking to America. <laughs> 
Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with Tether. Uh, like you guys said, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of, you know, bad, bad stuff that are always, always said about Tether. Not to mention the connection between them and Bitfinex and the wash trading that goes on there. It's just, uh, it's just bad news. Yeah. And even, even in the article, I mean, it states there are, it, one of the guys says there are obviously tremendous price increase. There were obviously tremendous price increases last year. And this paper indicates that manipulation played a large part in those price increases. So, I mean, it's, it's still sketchy. I mean, as you guys have said, uh, don't be careful. That's it. Just be careful. Don't, don't be stupid. Do your own research. Come on. You're smarter than that. What happens when uh, when they say, hey, your tether's not backed by anything, really. You can't actually redeem your tethers for actual dollars. Go to the tether website. Pretty sure it says that on the website, you cannot redeem your tether for actual dollars through the website. Uh, what happens when the exchange halts tether trading when all this stuff goes down? Are you going to have a lot of money in tether? Uh, again, hashtag NAFMU. Do your research. Be smart. Uh, Jojo, is that you? Yes. Uh, all right, so I got two things uh, to piggyback on that. Ron mentioned this a uh, couple of shows back, but a flag's a flag, guys. So if it's flagged and you are concerned about it, that speaks wonders in this game. And then also to follow it up, Bitcoin! <laughs> <laughs> ah, that was good. That was good. All right, fair enough. Be careful of Tether out there. Be careful of Tether out there. Moving on to our next article, brought to you by MarketWatch. Cryptos bounce after being sent lower by another exchange hack. Uh, Again, headlines can be deceiving. Um, Just because an exchange got hacked doesn't necessarily mean that that was the sole causation of the entire market going down. But uh, according to this article, you know, who knows? Angela, what you got on this article? (laughs) <laughs> what I thought was really interesting about it um, on the macro level, at least digesting it and taking a step back is how nostalgic it was to some uh, to our distilled thoughts last week um, as far as questioning if a bubble even exists and then even taking nostalgic back because I'm one for history. I can say my heart's everywhere. Taking it back even further to what we refer to as the housing bubble internet bubble and all these different bubbles and everyone missing the point that hey yeah it's been bad the past few weeks but they're still moving that is just a bar that got set it's set every day every minute of every day and there's a way out of it and guess what another nostalgic moment to last week was part of my distilled thoughts of we didn't have to wait 3,000 days guys okay to get out of that equivalency of a housing bubble a a housing bubble or internet bubble so i don't know just looking broad broad strokes here fair enough fair enough and actually uh going speaking of last week uh who was the one that wanted the question of the week of uh what what exchange is going to be hacked next was that you Alex? <laughs> that was me man i wanted, yeah, I wanted that would that would have worked <laughs> that would have worked uh <laughs> joe you got what you got on this article man you know i think it's just one of those things it's like with all of this going on i i'd like to see an exchange you know be proactive about it and then tell us about like steps they're gonna do to make sure that stuff like this doesn't happen because it could it just keeps happening and happening and happening you know i don't think it's going to take any time at all for us to come back from stuff like this by any means but it would be nice to have some reassurances from some of those folks at those exchanges just to say hey you know we're privy to all this like you know have finance or anyone else just come out and be like hey this is what's happening there and this is what we're doing to prevent it not necessarily like giving people ideas of like how to hack again but at least saying hey this is what we want to do to stop this from happening i know uh... well Overall, though, I mean, it says pretty clearly this may not be the only cause, too. And so with that, and another piggyback, because we're piggy, this is like a piggybacking kind of ride day. But to piggyback that, too, is, you know, we don't want to have to come to a point where 
within the cryptocurrency realm or market, there has to be a bailout like there was here recently in the last you know, a couple of decades. Or even just regulation too, because we don't want regulation to be there either. And uh, what do you got, Ron? What are your thoughts on this, man? All right, I'm going to piggyback Angela, who's piggybacking you. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to tie in what Angela, the bubble, right? So the bubble, and then also what you said. So if you think about the internet, you know, when it first started, it was a bubble, right? And it popped and it came back down. A lot of lessons were learned coming back down. So, I mean, the crypto market is, I see it as the same deal. A lot of lessons were learned in the internet market. This is like the growing pains of a new market and a new technology. That's all it is. So yeah, it, it might take time, but the crypt, crypto will adapt and it'll be stronger and better because of stuff like this. So I would like to hear him publicly say that, like Joe was saying, but that, that's how I view something like this. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's a proper exchange. Uh, well, with, with that being said, uh, you mentioned Binance. Binance has actually been pretty transparent with uh, stuff that has been going down at their exchange. I know they were, I don't want to necessarily, they were hacked, but there was some, some stuff going down. They they halted the trading and they they fixed everything their algorithms caught all that stuff on a certain coin i don't remember exactly what coin it was um but binance has been pretty good about that um so i don't certainly don't want to throw binance under the bus there um but actually my favorite part of this article was at the very beginning um again all the uh art all the article links will be down in the comments or the uh, info section underneath the video if you want to go check them out um but immut immutability a double-edged sword for Bitcoin. Uh, that is probably my favorite part of this article uh, because it's true. Um, what do you do when all your Bitcoin gets stolen? I mean, you can't go back and change it. You can't go back and, and take it back. Uh, you can't change the blocks. Uh, you, if your Bitcoin is stolen, it's gone. It, you, you don't get it back. That's what, uh, that's um, what time machines are for. <laughs> yep, somebody better start getting that, that stuff going on. Um, but I mean, unless you're like, uh, Ethereum, um, hate to throw Ethereum under the bus, um, and roll back your blocks when your chain is supposed to be immutable. Um, you know, Bitcoin isn't like that. If, if, if you get Bitcoin stolen, it's gone. And so, uh, these hacks that continually happen, um, are going to be pretty big. Um, but at the same time, I don't believe that, you know, this hack is the sole reason why the entire market uh, goes down. Um, but I mean, who knows? People are prone to just reading headlines and uh, doing the thing. Run, go ahead. So just real quick, you mentioned Binance. So when people's funds have been stolen from Binance, Binance does make it right. Just FYI. I just want to throw that out there. They, they have made it right and corrected anybody's lost funds. Right. Yep. And that and that's fair because again a lot of these a lot of these exchanges you can't really say the same. So all right, moving on to our next article here from CCN.com. ICOs taking advantage of retail investors, says the Nasdaq CEO. And uh, I just want to really quickly say that uh, this is a ridiculous article terrible stop, stop i agree stop crying stop it's not it's not the ico's fault for taking your money you're the one that hit send you're the one that did it hashtag nafamu hashtag do your own research stop being ignorant come on you can do well it. hey you charlie you. you're giving people a lot of credit here hashtag real talk <laughs> this is like really so i'm supposed to jeopardize my freedoms because you used your freedoms Really? No, not going to happen. You should have maybe done some research. Hmm. Uh, another thing too. Another thing too is just the fact that Grandma on the show she got taken by some Ethiopians who called her over her cell phone, over her landline that she still has, and she lost seven hundred bucks. Are we going to give her that seven hundred bucks back? No. All right. Well. Time to grow up, put your big points, big boy pants on, all right, America? <laughs> let's let's be real uh, about this CEO. 
in my opinion, she probably doesn't know the difference between the government's fake ICO warning websites compared to an actual ICO. She's never read a white paper. She doesn't know how to distinguish Bitcoin from Ethereum. Like she's literally just talking out of her ass. I would, I probably guarantee it. Uh, be close to it anyways. Like I just, it's bullshit. Like do your own research. Only like Nafamu, but in my opinion, like find something that legit solves a problem and that they have an actual working product. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, do you just do some research on it? Right. It's not hard. There, preach, preach. <laughs> there have been uh, there have been plenty of legitimate ICOs out there. Yeah, there's plenty of others that have been scams. But I mean, in the end, I mean, as I said in the beginning, uh, you're the one hitting the the button, and if you're hitting the buy more button uh, because someone told you to do it, uh, you're doing it wrong. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, anyone else got something to say on the? Uh, yeah, like two words, man. Beanie babies. <laughs> hey, hey, I had, I had, uh, I had quite a few beanie babies back in my day. All right, all right. Ron, are you holding that beer up? What's up? Yeah, we, yeah, we just yeah. lost all oh. the millennials, by the way. <laughs> yeah, way to go. Hey, um, yeah. If send me your princess bear. Your, Sorry. If you're worth your weight in beer, you know, when you read a white paper, you know if it's I worth see what you did there. or not. Yeah. And just in beer, like even a Bud Light or a Miller Light, <laughs> it doesn't have to be a nice beer. This, this lady, obviously, and also she has a quote in there where she says, uh, uh, the SEC said all ICOs are securities. Yeah, That's complete I, horseshit. I, I sympathize with SEC saying these are really security offerings. She added, "Yeah, I support the SEC on that." Yeah. Oh yeah, for yeah, sure. That true. That is not true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there are plenty of utility tokens out there, and uh, you know, with that, whatever. Uh, uh, I could go. On. I could ramble on for days about uh, retail investors being dumb. Don't blame other people for your mistakes. Moving on. Uh, that's a pretty big one. I know a lot of cryptos have been waiting uh, for this to happen. This is from Medium. Um, Ethereum's Casper and... Sh oh, just kidding. That's not the... Wait, where is the thing? Oh, wait. Where is our thing? Oh, yeah, whatever. Uh, sharding. Ethereum. Casper. All the things. I don't know where our <laughs> headline is. But, uh, yeah, I mean... Lots of lots of stuff happening with Ethereum and their new uh, the Casper uh, implementation sharding is super interesting. I know a lot of cryptos have been waiting for this to happen that have are, are run on top of the Ethereum network. Um, that because again, uh, I think uh, what am I trying to say? The uh, I don't know. Anyway, folks, go ahead. I've got plenty of notes on sharding. Uh, I mean, if we just want to go there. Hey, hey, I said <laughs> sharding D, not T. Okay, okay, let's get that uh, straight. <laughs> so my, I mean, this is just, uh, it's great news for Ethereum. Um, it's good for, you know, the fast, faster transactions, the scalability. Let's, I mean, I feel like it might, it might impact mining, making mining like faster. Um, and then Casper as well, moving it from, uh, you muted yourself. Just makes sense, but uh, I know, I know, I think Joe had something to say about this. Yeah, yeah, I've got some good things to say, and um, let's just go ahead and do one of these. Real, real, real quick. Uh, there it is. Real quick. Uh, with, you uh, before, before uh, I want to just correct Oaks uh, with with the Casper and sharding, and it's actually taking away proof of work completely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, like um, did I say that wrong? So, so the the major thing with Casper is it was going to be kind of like labeled as like uh, like a fork in essence, um, but so sharding is pushing main things off of the actual blockchain itself and doing subordinate tasks on different blockchains, and that's going to increase throughput via the transactions because you can shovel some sort of transaction over to one different chain if it's in relation to other things, right? You know, um, Casper, what it's trying to do is they made the move from proof of work to proof of stake and they're kind of doing like combo aspect right now. 
right now Casper is like trying to like completely unwit all of that. And it's just going to be straight like proof of stake. Uh, and the major things that are coming from that is basically, you know, Vitalik uh, was throwing out some like things and he was saying that, you know, if the miners get upset and they get greedy and they start pushing things too much, you know what, screw it. We'll just up the timelines on Casper, you know? And I think that's kind of like the thing here, right? Because the miners have like so much say because they're making three F like straight from each individual block. Like that's a lot of money, you know? And it's going to be moving down to 0.6F. And yeah, I mean, I think 0.6F is still going to be a crap ton of money in the long term. But for right now, um, with the way that it's working is it's going to be more of like proof of ownership. So whoever's owning the coins and has the stake, in essence, in the actual coin itself is going to get precedence over the other miners, which means that they're going to be able to do these transactions. And with that precedence, the cost is going to be lower. So there's going to be less production and push from mining companies to try to take a major stance in it. And what it's doing is it's lowering the energy costs of every single th thoroughput transaction. So that in collection with sharding, which is pushing it onto different side chains, it's not only going to scale Ethereum to the point where we can start to really use it for potential transactions, but it's also allowing us to remain eco-friendly because we're really pushing the envelope as you know, environmental aspects and really saving things like that. And, you know, Bitcoin, not to like bash it, but it uses a lot of money in order to mine these coins. So that's pretty much what's going on. I like the idea. I like that it's all coming out at the same time. And uh, I got one word, flipping. Damn, Joe, tell us how you really feel. All right. All right. Uh, Roan, uh, I'm going to go right to you because I know your okay. favorite word is flippening. I got four things, and I'm going to make it quick. One, Joe, I appreciate your passion. Love it. <laughs> Two, go green or go home. I agree with you, Joe. Three, talking about Casper, that uh, when I take my shirt off, they call me Casper. <laughs> so uh, this, this hits home the for friendly me. Goes. So I'm, I'm totally for it. Uh, number four, I just opened a new beer. It's called Mama's Milk, Ugh. and it is potent. Ugh. And th and that's it. I mean, I did. I have heard that Mama's Milk is uh, pretty potent and can do oh. for you whatever Eight it needs point, to do. It point. Look at that percentage. It's right uh, it's nutritious and awesome. delicious. Okay. This 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 batch of Mother's Milk was made over a month ago. We're Moving on. Moving and with on. that, we went to Beer of the Week. And with that, we do go to Beer of the Week, and it almost should be uh, Mother's Milk. But it is not. Uh, Angela, in the beginning of the show, talked about No Lie Amber Ale. Angela, what is No Lie Amber Ale all about? Well, sorry to let you guys down. It certainly isn't Mother's Milk. Uh, if anything, it's a lot of steps down below that. I don't think it's actually nutritious or, well, it's delicious, but <laughs> it's just like everything else that's delicious in your life. No lie? It's no lie. <laughs> it's no lie, right right out of here. So any of my Spokaneanites out there, you haven't had a chance to go to the brewery um, and enjoy the river, please take a chance to do so. Amber Ale is available all year round, so you should be able to uh, sip on this and be reminiscent of this wonderful episode that you're watching right now on the Crypto Brew Show. The BA score, 3.66 out of 5, actually dropped down like two, percent, two tenths of a percentage point since we started the show. So whoever's out there talking bad about my people, <laughs> we'll make it up to you. Heard that, heard that. Alrighty, I like it. No lie, Amber Ale. If you see one at the store, pick it up. Pick it up. Alright, moving on to Distilled Thoughts. Uh, hashtag NAFMU. Heard that quite a bit this episode. You know, don't be stupid. Uh, but, we are talking about uh, Bitcoin and Ether being claimed not securities by the SEC. Um, but, some in ICOs may be, says the SEC. Uh... This is 
pretty hot button topic as far as uh, you know. We, everyone was waiting to see what the SEC wanted to talk about, and it's good news for Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, being classified not securities. Um, but I don't know what what, what we got to say. We'll start with uh, let's start with Joseph. It's about freaking time, guys. All right. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and put that out there. You know, we've been waiting for this for a long time. And it's about time that the SEC starts adapting to the new medium. And the medium is cryptocurrency. You know, that is the major aspect of what's going on here. And so they're starting to realize that those things are happening. The UK is starting to open future markets on everything, which is really awesome. We got a lot of stuff going on. And a lot of people are actually starting to like realize the true potential of cryptocurrency and no lie guys, this is a great thing. So, um, that's pretty much what I got. So what else, what do you guys got out there? Ron, what you got? I like it. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, Oaks, what you got? Uh, man, I, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not too well versed in, uh, you know, what securities are and all like the actual definitions of everything they're saying. But I mean, with them coming out and putting a bold statement out there that's saying like finally saying that Bitcoin and Ether are not uh, securities, it's, it's a great thing. And I do agree that some initial coin offerings are because there are so many out there that you just can't say that all of them aren't. Um, but I mean, that's really all I got to say about that. <laughs> Fair enough. Sorry. Angela, what, what you got? Again, pretty cool. I mean, not to be all dumb and dumber about it, but I like it a lot. And there's some people laughing, I'm sure. But, um, I mean, it just helps maintain the culture of, um, decentralization and not having any kind of, I guess, stifling regulation so there you go <laughs> fair enough fair enough um all right well there it is uh i mean it's good news for the uh oh oh, oh, Ron, oh. something to say Ron and okay oh oh geez okay fine uh dang you guys are both showing me your fantastic beers over there uh Ron, what you got all right so we are severely under selling how huge this is <laughs> so because it's not a security it does not fall under the jurisdiction of the sec that's huge okay yeah that's that's huge sorry <laughs> right yeah um and the it's reason that is because huge huge just like the wall that has yet to be built huge the reason it's so big is because one like Joe, like Joe said, crypto is the new medium, right? That not only includes currencies, but it also includes like your utility coins that so like decentralized apps or like even a inventory network like BMW partnered with VeChain, right? So that is not going to fall under some BS jurisdiction where it's micromanaged. It will be able to naturally function and allow us as end users to profit off of. Fair enough. Joseph. All right. So oh. that, that, uh, that explains it very well for me. Uh, and again, probably just like some viewers out there who don't understand it. Fucking huge. Pardon my French. <laughs> but yeah, no, no, I mean, you're absolutely right. Oaks. Like, I mean, it is extremely, it's, it's extremely big, you know, and that's, that's what she said um but anyways um this this is a major deal for the space um other things that come to mind is like you know not not even necessarily about the usability and scale of the products themselves around but you know just thinking about that state that you just went through arizona you could pay your taxes with btc right you don't have to worry about like figuring out all of the changes and like what your money's gone through and what your coins have transitioned from and then to, and then how they got out of the market. You don't want to have to worry about like trying to come up with a number that you need to in, in essence, understand for your taxes in order to pay your taxes, you know, 
Like with this happening, I just love it because it's allowed all of those places that are using BTC as a form of payment right now to understand exactly what they're doing. And they don't have to worry about the tax implications of recording every single transaction and defining how that works in order to make this process okay. It's allowing them to actually do what they need to do and use the currency they want to use. All right? Can I get some action, people? Yes! Hoorah! Right, got, okay, anyway. You, what do you got, Ron? Oh, yeah, go. Go, 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 Ron. Okay, so I'm going to piss on the fire you just started. I love your passion. I'm sorry. But so just because it's not a security, it's still considered a property as of right now, not a currency. So when you buy Bitcoin, you're buying property as of right now. What happens when you buy something? You pay taxes. So unfortunately, right now, we're still in the state where you do have to pay taxes, but it's not as severe as if you're buying or selling a security. So we're not well, out of the clear yet, but we're almost there. Uh, I, I really hate the piss shower that's coming on top of me right now, but you know what's so good about this? At least this tri Triceratops double IPA doesn't taste like piss beer. You know what I'm saying? There you go. All right. There All right. You go. I'll take uh, that away from that. With, uh, with that being said, uh, only thing I got to add to that is, I mean, as far I'm going to leave Ethereum out of this. Uh, as far as classifying Bitcoin as a security or not, I mean, it doesn't, in the end, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, they could do whatever they want. They could classify Bitcoin as wherever the heck they want. Uh, it, it, in the end, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can't stop Bitcoin. You won't stop Bitcoin. All the media out there with those headlines. Bitcoin isn't going anywhere. Crypto's not going anywhere. Hashtag Nafamu. But let's go. Let's the flippening go. is coming. The flippening. <laughs> Whatever you say. All right. Moving on. Moving on. Let's go. Hey, Crypto with Grandma. Episode 2 will be out shortly after the show. Uh, but here is a little teaser. Just got back from the sewing circle and, and I was talking to Ethel about you. Oh. And she was wondering what that dang plastic crypto was all about, too. Well, last week we went over the blockchain. So this week I'm going to tell you about the, the three different kinds of cryptocurrencies. Boom. And there you go. That is episode two. Uh, Roan talking with Grandma about the three different times of different types of cryptocurrencies so make sure hey. you check that out on our channel what you got oaks cheers to grandma all right yeah or cheers to roan you got a hot ass grandma heard heard that heard that uh-oh i mean her beard's nice that's that's about us uh oh uh, keep keep talking uh, about technical difficulties so i mean let's be real you know we're teaching grandma about crypto because we don't want grandma to be swindled by the Ethiopians. <laughs> All right. Or, no, or no, 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 no offense to Ethiopia. I, I, I'm just saying yeah, that there's no, there no, no wrongdoing <laughs> wrong about the Ethiopians whatsoever. It could be anyone. It could be someone right as next door to me, my neighbor, you know. But poor grandma, she could get taken advantage of and I just, I fear for her cookie jar. And in order to understand that reference, you're going to have to watch the video. There you go. There you go. That, <laughs> that is great. You can't get taken advantage of when she's protected by the security tokens. Okay. True. <laughs> hey, there you go. Tune in uh, to the Crypto Brew Show channel and you will know exactly what we're talking about. Moving on to the question of the week or the question of last week. We had how low will bitcoin go by this time next week and we had our answers angela with 5748 timmy with 6000 ron with 5749 trying to price his rider uh although the wrong way maybe i don't know oaks at 5900 joe at 5454 i was at 6315 and deja was at 5350 our answer is 
And depending on how you read the question, um, you know. Stop nice. trying to get away with things, Charlie. Who you knows? lost. Fair and square, man. Price is right rules. You got the price is right. Closest me, but I was price is right by Timmy. So we'll go. And we all thought Timmy was weird for going with flat 6,000. Let's just <laughs> all put that out there. We know we're all thinking that. But uh, Timmy, you, cheers to you, you man. Why don't you see this show? For you, man. Hey, real quick, uh, as I said, guys, the guys that are watching, $31 off. All right? Hashtag Nafamu, this guy. All right. Listen to him, but don't listen to him. But Nafamu, but listen to him. <laughs> hey, but also, That's my it. first, and my, the first time hanging out with you guys, remember, didn't we say there was no curve? Like, <laughs> you don't get a 3% fluffer. <laughs> it's not happening. Who's got the fluffer? Are you talking about me? I am. I, I'm at like point zero uh, five percent buffer. All right, I'll take that buffer. Uh, that's, that's not doing. That's see, not see, doing see, bad. Now, that, that's now, now, all right, we're moving on. We're moving on. Um, Jojo brought us this question of the week uh, due to certain EOS accounts uh, being locked. Um, again, hashtag do your own research. All right. And, you know, we probably should have talked about that because that's what we're here for. But we're not. You can do it. I believe in you out there. What percentage will EOS go up or down within the next week? Uh, let's start with... Run. Let's go back to forward. Give me 6%, Drew. 6% what? Up or down? This way. We're gonna take that as a down. Down. Right? Unless six six point two one nine seven. Are you are you saying that it's going down to something that's going up, Ron? Three point two one percent. Wait, what? What was happening? I said. I said. Four point <laughs> six two. This is, this is why we don't start from the back. That's what. Never mind. I'm not even gonna do it. Uh, uh, Ron. So what? What do you have? 4.62. Heard. Down or up? 7.2. Oh, my God. Rollins is qualified. Oaks, what do you got? Uh, I think I'm going to go 8.253% up. Okay, Angela? I'm saying down 0.1%. Oh, nasty. Uh, Joe? I like it. I like it a lot. From everyone. I'm not talking about Angela. I'm talking about your answer. 4.62. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, so, all right. So, I am thinking that this is going to go down, and we're right in the midst of that article breaking. So, I think it's going to go down 7.8% over the next week. Drew, final answer. Regis. All right, and <laughs> I'm going to say, oh, we're da -da 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 -da, down, nap lies up 2.6%. And Rowan, since we haven't had a legit answer from you, what do you got? 2.63%. All right, that is your final answer. You're welcome. All righty, guys. I see you piggybacking is... on the person that actually knows what he's doing. That is the... <laughs> that is the or is getting lucky. Hashtag Nafamu. That... Yeah, absolutely. Hashtag Nafamu. Do your own research. That is the premise of this show this week. Uh, thanks for watching the Crypto Brew Show. We got some final comments from uh, the CBC. Oh, by the way, um, we have uh, this week a the honorary our new honorary member of the CBC is uh, Angela. Angela, you are hey. part of the uh, Crypto Brew Crew now. Oh my God! Hey. I, just, I want to thank God for this award. There we go. There we go. All right. Well, actually, with that being said, Angela, we'll we'll start with you. Any last uh, last comments for our viewers? Of course, as always, go forth and conquer. There we go. Oaks, Oaks, what you got? Uh, yeah, just uh, next time, drink some uh, Shiner Strawberry with me, guys. All right. <laughs>
And JoJo, what you got? I'll give it to you, Oaks, this time. Um, but anyways, uh, welcome to the show, Angela. Uh, great to have you here. And, um, you know, remember, Angela, you know, if you're going to be a part of the show, you got to stay bold and keep them cold. Awesome, awesome. And uh, Roan, what you got over um, there, man? Two things. Mama's milk makes you strong. Number two, 2.63%. <laughs> Poker in the what? Uh, in the what? Okay, Doki. All right, guys. It's been great. Thank you so much for watching The Crypto Brew Show. Like and subscribe below to learn about more show. It's been a pleasure. We'll see you next time. Cheers.